Are you a really good sitter? There is a great chance that you are, and I'm gonna tell you what that means and what that has to do with your posture. My name is Rob Drenning, I'm a physical therapist. Here's what happens in our daily lives. One, we sit a lot, right? Some people even sit for eight hours a day at a desk typing at work. We have commutes, we have screens, TV. We just spend a lot of time sitting. And what that does is it pulls us into this slouched, flexed, bent forward type of posture. Okay, and on top of that, everything we do during our day-to-day -day lives is in front of us, right? We have screens, we have uh, phones, we have tablets. Even if we're reaching for stuff, bending for stuff, we're always being pulled forward. And the good thing is our bodies are really smart. The bad thing is it means that our bodies just learn to go forward a lot better. It becomes easier and easier over time to be pulled into that slouched, flexed posture. In a sense, we, get, we become more efficient sitters, right? Our bodies learn to go into that flex position because that's what we do more often and that's where everything is in our day-to-day -day lives. And that's the reason why almost every single human being alive does not have amazing posture, right? Nobody sits up like this and types and does their thing. That's just not how we are. We're all forward. That's the reason why. But there are two main problems with that. One is mobility is very much a use it or lose it type of thing. So if we're always going forward, guess what? We're going to lose the ability to go backward. And there are some times in our lives where we need to be able to extend the other way. Walking is a great example. If we're forward for decades and decades, eventually walking even becomes harder or sports that require extension becomes harder. So if we're always being pulled forward like this, we need to do exercises to correct that so our body still learns to go in the directions that we don't commonly use it during our day-to-day -day lives. We cannot lose mobility in the other direction. And the second thing is, let's be honest, it's the vanity aspect, right? I get asked all the time in the clinic, people come in and say, my parents, my grandparents, they're all slunched, hunched forward and they walk funny and I don't wanna end up like them, they have the hunchback. How do I prevent that or how do I fix that? I get asked that all the time because nobody wants to look like that. We all want to have that nice straight posture and be as tall as we were when we were, uh, as, when we were young adults. So those are two main reasons why we want to do exercises that correct that pull forward and teach our muscles to hold us back like that. I'm gonna show you those in this video and once we go through those, I'm gonna tell you what you need to do to get carryover into real life situations. How can you translate using those muscles with these exercise into actually having good posture? So let's go get to that routine now. So first exercise we're gonna do is a hip flexor stretch. Now it's important that we just don't think about, when we think of posture, it's a lot of neck, shoulder, upper back kinds of things. And that's true, but we also want to think about standing posture and other things. And the hips and lower back play a huge role in that. So I wanted to include in this routine some lower body stuff as well, so that we're thinking about the whole body posture that we're trying to address. So the first thing we're going to do is stretch the hip flexors or the front of the hip. To do that, you get in a kneeling position with one leg down and the other knee up in front of you like this. Now, if kneeling bothers you, you can do the same thing in standing. You just keep your back leg all the way straight, okay? With kneeling, it just gives you a little more support. You can hold on to something if you need to. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lean your pelvis, your hips forward, bending this knee in front of you. Let this leg go back. My shoulders are gonna stay back a little bit until I feel a pull in the front of my hip or thigh. And I'm gonna go in and out of that. If you're not feeling a pull, you're usually leaning too far forward or think of pushing your pelvis, your hips forward and your shoulders back. You'll really start to feel that pull in there. Now this foot behind me, my toes are gonna to point back. This foot in front of me, as I bend my knee, the ankle's gonna bend in the other way. So we're gonna get a little bit of knee, a little bit of ankle mobility in with this exercise as well. And what you're gonna do is go in and out of this about 20 times, just like this. And if you want to, you can even use your other hand, get some shoulder mobility and reach overhead as you lean forward. That's going to really help with the lats and a lot of other important muscles. It won't make as big a deal from a big of a deal from a posture standpoint, but if you're doing it and you might as well work on your arms as well, you're going to do 20 reps of that again, with or without the arm. 
Oh, almost fell over there, be careful. Then you're gonna switch legs and do the exact same thing. Lean just like that, keep the shoulders back, just until you feel a pull, you don't have to go any farther. We're gonna go in and out of this. Now, the reason we're not holding it for 30 seconds like you see a lot of stretching videos doing is because there are no times in our day-to-day -day lives that you're in an end range position and staying there for 30 seconds or more. That's just not very functional. And that type of stretching honestly hasn't been shown to really work that well. So we want to stretch and do mobility exercises in ways that replicate what our muscles and joints are actually doing in our day-to-day -day lives. So that's why we're not holding this. We're going just in and out, just like that. I'm going to hold on here. I'm going to stretch my opposite arm back just to get a little bit of shoulder and upper back mobility. If you have any shoulder problems, just be careful if it hurts, don't do that. But the key here is getting that hip opened up, that hip extended. When we're sitting, our legs are flexed the other way, so we want to open them up back behind us to counteract that posture. The next exercise is called a bridge or a glute bridge. We just opened up our hips, stretched out those hip flexors. Now we want to use the muscles on the other side of the joint, the glutes, to be able to actively create that same motion. Stretching and mobility is only good if our muscles are good at actively using that range. That's the key to this whole posture routine. It's not just passive stretching. Your muscles have to work to be able to hold you into those more upright postures. And that's how you get a good mobility routine. So this will do that for the lower body. But let me show you how this works. You're gonna lay down on your back, preferably on a firmer surface, and your knees are gonna be bent just like that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna push your heels down into the floor, and I'm gonna squeeze with my glutes, squeeze the butt muscles, and lift your hips up towards the ceiling. I'm trying to lift as far up as I can to open up those hips. We just stretch that, and now we're trying to use the glute and the butt muscles to do the work for us. Up slow, brief pause, down slow. You want to try to keep your core, your abs nice and tight, if you can, as you squeeze and engage through the glutes. If this is feeling really good, you can um, do it on one leg where you hold one foot in the air and you bridge up like that. That's a little harder. But the key here from a posture standpoint is to not just lift your butt up, but to lift it up to fully open up the hip. We're training those muscles to use the range that we just gained from stretching. Your reps on this are going to be the same. You're going to do about 20 repetitions, just like the other exercise. If your back hurts, don't do that, but that's the glute bridge. This next exercise is called a foam roller series. We're going to do two things, one called the backstroke, one called a thoracic or mid-back extension. This is going to help us work on them. We're moving up from the lower back and lower body. In the mid-back now, where we really get that flexed, bent posture, this is going to be a great tool to help undo that. That part of our back gets pulled forward the most, so this step is going to be really crucial. Now, I'm going to use a foam roller here. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them at any sporting goods store, Target, anywhere like that. Now, if you don't have one, don't worry about it. Roll up a few beach towels. This is four inches thick. Just roll up something that's going to be able to lift you up a little bit, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. I've even had people use PVC pipe or things along those lines. So, um, but these are only like 20 bucks or so, uh, but use towels if you don't have one handy. So first thing you're going to do, you want it kind of long because we're going to lay on it with our head and our tailbone and our spine resting against the roller. So let me show you how that works right now. So you want your head nice and supported on the roller and your tailbone on it too. You don't want your head hanging back off it like that. You don't want to leave this with neck pain. So keep everything on there nice and supported. And then what we're going to do is one arm's going to go up overhead. If you can get it to the floor, great. And then you're going to come back like you're doing the backstroke. And then the other arm doing the same thing. Up to the floor and let it roll back around. I'm hitting the wall there, but you can do both arms at the same time. That's totally fine too. You just want to let your hands get as far back overhead as you can. Let gravity help you here. Get that good extension and then bring your hands right back. This bothers your shoulder, just be careful, don't go 
quite as far. These you can do the same as the others. You can do about 20 repetitions or when I'm down here, I like to just do it for a minute or two. Um, it's just sometimes hard getting on and off the roller and it feels good to do. Um, and if you're going up overhead and it's the down coming back part that bugs you, just go up and down. You can isolate it just like that. And you can just let your arms go out to the side. It's just to open up the chest and shoulders and get a little bit of extension going into that upper back. So that's the first one on this foam roller series. For the other one, we're going to spin the roller the other way, just like that. And what you're going to do is put the roller right around the shoulder blades, basically in that mid back where we all get really hunched forward. And then you want to hold your head and your neck right here. You want to be able to relax your neck muscles, hold your head and your neck. And what you're going to do, I'm going to move this arm just so you can, I can see, is you're going to let yourself arch back gently over the roller. Okay. So if I have my hands here and I'm holding my head and I'm just gently arching back over the roller. Okay. Just like that. Now I'm keeping my butt on the ground. If you lift your butt up, then it starts to put strain on your low back. So you want to keep your butt down and just gently arch back over the roller. You can keep your elbows up or you can get even better of a shoulder stretch by arching or by letting your elbows go down to the floor like that. Now you want to make sure your neck's not dropping down. The fulcrum point is the foam roller. You're just trying to arch through that part of your mid back and then you can roll it up, go up about an inch or two and do the same thing. Just let your back extend back over the roller. You can go down an inch or two, anywhere from the lower ribs to the top of your shoulders. You can do this and just spend a minute or two in this position doing this. Now, what I, a mistake I see a lot is people lifting their butt up and actually rolling on that part of your back. That's not going to do anything for you. It's not going to help your posture. You're using your abs to hold yourself up. Here you want to drop your butt down, let your abs relax, and then use the roller to extend back over to counteract that flex posture. This is going to get a lot of good extension through that mid part of our back and do a lot to help us in this posture routine. The next exercise we're going to do is called a modified cat cow or a thoracic or mid back cat cow. We just did some more passive stretching on the roller, so now we're going to move into more active exercises where our muscles are going to learn to pull that mid back into that extended position. And these are tiny muscles that are hard to use, but this is my favorite exercise for how to do that. Let me show you that now. I'm sure you, you might be familiar with or have done the regular old cat cow where you're on your hands and knees, you arch your back, and you sag your back, and you arch and sag. That's great for your low back. That doesn't do a lot for your upper back, your mid back. That's what's really key for our posture. So what we want to do is instead of being on our hands like this, we're going to drop down onto our forearms. Okay, And then you're going to do the same cat-cow motion where you arch your back, and then you sag your back and look up at the same time. Now you're going to feel this a lot more in your mid-back than you do on the other one. You can try them both and compare the difference. But this one, it's going to be a smaller range of movement, but it's really going to target that mid-back nicely. Now, don't strain your neck too much trying to look up. You're going to have a lot more neck motion in this position than you will here. That's because we're just targeting that upper mid-back. So just look up enough until you start feeling that tension in between the shoulder blades and then go back the other way. Just get my knees back a little farther. So just look up without putting too much strain on your neck as you try to let your mid back sag towards the floor. If you're really stiff, you won't have a lot of motion in this range. Don't worry about it. You're just using those muscles to pull your back into that extended position. You're gonna do about 20 to 30 reps of that. So just be careful not to strain your neck, but that's how you do the modified cat-cow. The next great postural exercise we're going to do is called prone shoulder horizontal abduction, or prone T to some people. That's a fancy name, but basically what we're going to do is take what we just learned on the roller about how to get our spine up straighter, and now we want to teach our muscles, hey, you need to be able to actively pull the shoulder blades back and keep the spine extended to hold that position. So we want to do a lot of active motions as part of this mobility routine. That's going to help our posture the most. So 
So there's one key motion I want to show you upright before I go on the ball. And if you don't have a ball, don't worry about it. I'll show you another alternative position you can use as well. So it's not necessary. So the first thing we want to do, it's called a cervical retraction or neck retraction. And it's just like if you're trying to give yourself a double chin, you're going to push your chin. I'll turn sideways here. Uh, you're going to push your chin straight back. I'm not actually using my hands to do that. I'm using my muscles to pull back like that. Just like, like if you pull a cat by the back of the neck, I don't even know if that's like okay to do, but I'm not a cat person, but that's the action. Like someone were doing that to you. Okay. You use your muscles not to look up, but to pull that chin back. That's called a neck retraction. We're counteracting that forward head posture that we all get. And we're pulling our chin back to activate these muscles back here. I want you to practice that a few times doing that 10 or 15 reps. You don't have to do this every time, but once you do, that's going to be a precursor to what we do on the ball. And what we're going to do is you're going to go leaning over the ball just like this. Okay. If you don't have a ball, you can use, if this were the corner of your bed, you can just lean over the corner of a bed or you can lean over the side of your bed and just do one arm at a time. Either one would work. Some people use an ottoman, but a ball is okay. And you can see here, mine is super, super flat. I can tell my kids were playing dodgeball with it or something because that's always what happens when I'm practically laying on the floor. So hopefully yours is more pumped up than mine, but you'll get the idea. So we're going to lean onto the ball here. We're going to do that neck retraction motion. Okay. You're going to pull your chin back and then we're going to make the letter T. I'm hitting the wall a little there, but you're going to make the letter T with our arms, your thumb up towards the ceiling and your arms straight at about shoulder height. And from there, holding that neck retraction, you're going to raise your thumbs a little bit and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Just like that. I'm going to scoot a little bit so I have a little more room there. Thumb up towards the ceiling, squeeze the shoulder blades. Now, the key here is not raising your hand too high. You know, you're not trying to fly away. It's not a shoulder motion, it's a shoulder blade, it's a mid-back motion. You're squeezing the shoulder blades and relaxing your neck at the same time. You don't want to be shrugging and tensing up like that. I know this is a lot to think about, but doing this with a good quality of motion is really going to be the best for your posture. So no weights. It's surprisingly hard. You'll, you'll feel those muscles, but no weights, just the weight of your arms for now. So we're going to get in that position again arms out straight, thumb up, retract the neck, squeeze the shoulder blades and just let your hands come up an inch or two. My hands are always going to stay a little below my shoulders and feel that in the mid back. If that's too hard, you can bend your elbows and be in more like a W letter W position and start with that. Don't forget the neck retraction first, hold that throughout and squeeze the shoulder blades while relaxing the neck. You're shooting for 20 to even 30 reps of these, but these will be harder. So use your own discretion. But think about those key things with this exercise. Neck retraction first, thumbs up, arms out straight, squeeze the shoulder blades without shrugging the neck. That's the key. And don't raise your hands too high like you're trying to flap away. That's how you do that exercise the best to have the best impact on using the muscles that are going to keep you upright to maintain that great posture. The next posture exercise we're going to do is called bilateral shoulder external rotation. We've worked a lot of the mid back. We need to also work the shoulder muscles in the back of our shoulders that help keep that rounding uh, shoulder position from coming forward and pull the shoulders back with that upper back. All of these things work together. So this is going to be a great exercise. I'm using a resistance band here. You can get these anywhere. Nowadays, if you don't have a resistance band, use a bungee cord, just something light with a little bit of resistance. Even no resistance will be fine if you have nothing. So just do the movement, but a little resistance is good. So what we want to do is you're going to hold the band here, uh, thumbs up, out. The, the thumb position won't matter as much here. But what we're going to do is keep your elbows in against you, and you're going to rotate your hands out to the side and squeeze the shoulder blades back together. I'm keeping my elbows in the whole time. I'm not uh, doing that type of deal. My elbows against my ribs, hands go out and squeeze the shoulder blades. This looks like a small motion, but this works really tiny muscles in the back of your shoulder. 
and you'll get fatigued pretty quick. I'm on rep, whatever, four, and I feel it already. Your goal is similar to the others, 20 to 30 reps of this one. You can keep it light. You don't have to have a lot of tension on here. Just nice and easy. If you don't have the band, just do the motion. But hands out, don't forget that shoulder blade squeeze. That's the one most people miss. But besides that, there's not a ton to think about with this exercise. You're just doing that motion. That's how you do the bilateral external rotation. So there we have our total body mobility routine to help improve posture. We look through the, all the joints that are involved in keeping us upright straight, both standing and sitting, and not just passive stretching, but the key is active exercises that teach those postural muscles what they're supposed to do again. So that's your series to do for a total body postural routine. But does that mean that by, by doing those exercises, suddenly you'll show up at work on Monday or you'll get in the car next time and poof, you'll be up straight? No, that's not how it works. We all know that. It would be awesome if it did, but that's not how it works. So what we have to do is periodically through the day, when you think about sitting up straight, it's not about being straight. Okay, that's going to put more stress to your low back, make our muscles actually work harder than we need them to. What we want to do is think about being taller. That's the key to posture. Like someone's lifting you up on the top of your head. That's going to naturally line things up in a neutral position, not overly extended, just nice and neutral where your muscles can work really efficiently. And in that position, then you just have to think about gently activating some of the muscles that we just talked about using. If you're standing, you think about the glutes as well. But that's what you have to do. And, and I'm not saying to do that all day long. That's impossible. You get nothing done. Nobody can sit like this perfectly upright and tall all day long. But we don't need to, fortunately. We just have to remind our brain periodically through the day, hey, this is what you're supposed to do, muscles, and do that repeatedly. And over time, it becomes more and more natural for us, and we don't have to tell our brain to do it. It becomes automatic. That becomes the new normal for your posture. So that's what you have to do to bridge the gap between real life and these exercises. They're both important, but that is how you really get rid of that hunchback and improve your posture throughout the rest of your life. Now keep watching for more mobility videos and tips.